so that makes my life a lot easier. But my favourite driver, uh, because the race is so long, they actually keep two drivers in the cars, or, you know, one at a time, but they switch drivers, you know, at certain parts in the race. Yeah. Uh, my favourite driver has never done Bathurst before, but he used to ride in, I don't know what the comparison would be, but, you know, the next level under the big boys. Um, but he had an accident when... Oh, the first time that he was supposed to do Bathurst, he had an accident in one of those monster cars right before it, and he ended up breaking his back, and he lost about two centimetres of his height and everything, and had to rehab and everything. Um, but this was his first time doing Bathurst, I think. Well, at least in the big boys' cars, anyway. And they actually had a 17-year-old rookie as his co-driver, and they'd found oh, wow. him. Th- they'd found him through a reality show. So we're all sitting there going, yeah, this is going to end well. Anyway, the kid gets in the car, does two laps and runs straight to the wall. And we're like, I think I yeah. saw that one. Yeah, like something went wrong with the steering and he couldn't control it and ran into the wall. Oh, no, that uh, he was in the Shannon's car, the green one. But anyway, yeah, he hit the wall and then he did, he did a good job getting it home because the steering arm was completely buggered. But yeah, were, I saw that one. Yeah, yeah, they they fixed the car. They were only like 60-something laps behind, but, you know, they made up one position. So they weren't last when they finished. <laughs> well, that works. Well, you know, all it is, just got to finish. See, the thing with Bathurst is it doesn't matter where the hell you start on the grid because there's going to be that much carnage. It really doesn't matter. You know, you just got to be there at the end. So, well, and see, that, see, I can't, like, okay, I can't watch, like, NASCAR races and things like that on TV. Because it's just a big, giant left turn. That's, yes. that's all it is. A giant circle. And my dad and I got into a conversation with this because he's a huge NASCAR person. And I said, you know, there, there isn't, I mean, I mean, you need some talent. I mean, it's not easy. Mm. But, I mean, you watch these people like in Formula One, which are basically souped up, you know, go-karts yes. that are going really, really fast. Really, 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 that, really fast. And, and they're taking right turns, too. And it's like, what? <laughs> you can't take a right turn in racing? No! Well, yeah, you can. But th- this is why Marcus Ambrose is so good at his street laps. Because he does Bathurst, and he did Bathurst for a really, really long time. You know, because that's our annual big thing. You know, that's yeah. the biggest racing event of, on the calendar for Australia. And everyone watches Bathurst. Whether you like it or not, you watch it. So <laughs> That and because everything yeah, else. Yeah, I, I put think on... I remember, what was it? No, it it wasn't last week. It was on your Facebook that I saw it. Um, Your uncle or something, Russell? Yeah, something like that. Hi, Uncle Russell. (laughs) You're you're not really an Australian if you don't tune in at least once. Exactly. So, stuff your good days and your crikeys and everything like that. If you're really an Australian, you will watch at least a couple of minutes of Bathurst on Bathurst Weekend. I'm an Australian! (laughs) (laughs) We need to make you a badge, I think. (laughs) I want a badge that I'm an Australian, because I did watch. I I was going to watch for the whole thing, but then I looked at it and I went, I can't sit here that long. (laughs) Yeah, we sit there. I mean, I went and had about a 20-minute sleep in the middle of it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I got woken up by, oh my god, there's fire! So it's like, oh, he's there. Yeah, so Oops. one of the drivers had only just refueled and hadn't pumped his, his accelerator or his brake pad or something, I don't know. And, yeah, ended up in the wall, and there was fuel everywhere, and it just went woof. Luckily, everybody was fine. That happened once. I was at a um, a dirt track here, because I, I like dirt track racing, even if it is a bunch of left turns. And it's always, to me, it's more exciting watching it live than it is watching on TV. Oh, definitely. But, uh, cause especially dirt tracks, because you can feel it. Um, well, at least the dirt track here, um, they're, it's basically a fence and then a large embank- 
equipment and then the track. And that's the only thing really protecting you, which is, well, it's Chatham, which is <laughs> redneck capital of Louisiana, really. But, you know, but um, you can feel the engines roaring. You can, you know, feel the dirt hitting you and all this. Mm. And then when the big cars come out, there's like just this thunder and it's amazing. But um, one year I went and um, they had one guy hit a w or hit the wall, and fuel went everywhere. And even on dirt, it's pretty bad. And um, it lit up. Or actually, no, they. It was really cold. I remember that. They moved the car, and the only way that you can get rid of it without you know letting it seep into the soil, or not soil, but the dirt, is to set it on fire. <laughs> so there's a bunch of rednecks <laughs> standing around this big thing of fuel. You just see one of them pull out a cigarette lighter, bend down, and whoosh! Huge fireball. And they're all standing around it, and everyone in the crowd is going, Ooh, I want to get over that! Because we're all freezing by this point. <laughs> like, ah, I want to be over there. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, well, we call the the dirt tracks or whatever they are uh, speedway here, and our closest speedway is Archerfield. And when the wind's blowing in the right direction during speedway season, you can hear them from the house. So, you know, it's not too bad. Hubby and kiddo usually go at least a couple of times a season, and you know, they just sort of, sort well. Of we sit used there. to go more often than we did, but because uh, uh, my dad started racing, and so you know. We always went to support him, but then the track really just kind of screwed us over. So it's like, you know what? You're not worth it. So they've put the um, race car up for the season until um, an another one of the um, tarmac tracks opens back up. And um, one of our family friends is actually going to Houston with one of his friends to uh, race this weekend. So... Good luck to them. Yay, good luck. Stay safe. Yes. Yeah. Especially in Houston. My God, that place is nuts. <laughs> and it's not just the people. No. <laughs> we love you, Houston. <laughs> we love you, Houston. Houston, we may have a problem, but, you know, that's not our problem. Or, or at least a problem with. I mean, <laughs> fine. <laughs> Uh, okay, should we get along with other things? Yes, we should. And uh, unfortunately, it's only for you. But this is the last Doctor Who weekend that we will be discussing until Christmas. Okay, should we play the music anyway? Yeah, one last time. Okay. Yay! Yay! You know, honestly, I am quite proud of myself for that one. I mean, it, it, it cuts off kind of short at the end, but it's just long enough to where you get the feeling. Yeah, you're just going, yeah! Yeah, Doctor Who Weekend! Robin called me one time and she said, do you know that I actually cheer every time that y'all say, it's Doctor Who Weekend again! And then the music plays? I was Yay. like, yes! That's what I was going for! <laughs> So, yes, it was the last one for the season, and I'll put that in inverted commas, because we do have a Christmas special coming up a little later in the year. Mm -hmm. Um, eh. I think I'm kind of with you with the whole eh thing. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, it was playing in the background on the Saturday night, so, you know, got got little bits here and there, and we had a friend come over and visit... And then Hubby and the kiddo watched it on Sunday. And then I sat down and I actually watched it on Monday. And I was sort of like, for a season final, that's kind of really annoying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, not just in the cliffhanger, oh my god, what's going to happen type cliff cliffhanger. This is the, I want to know who the hell's coming into the next season. I want to know what's going to happen. I don't want this, you know finish midway through a story type thing, you know, you can't just do that. You've got to stop pissing me off, you know, give me some answers, <laughs> damn it. 
Well, and see, what's funny is, um, and I'm actually trying to find it right now, someone posted an article um, not too long ago. Let me see if I can get to my Facebook in order to find it. And, like, you don't really... It's not one of those things that you really realize while it's happening, but when it's all over and you sit back and you think about it, there are so many questions that mm -hmm. we've never gotten answers to. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Um, one of them that I remember right off the top of my head is, um, do you remember back in Season 5 where, um, you know, the Doctor comes back and, oh, there it is, 15 unanswered questions. <laughs> 